Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this one I'm going to be trying something new. Uh, every so often, maybe every few days or whenever, I'm going to do these kind of short videos. So rather than the normal 15 to 20 minute tutorials, I'll do these maybe 5 to 10 minute videos. Where it's just kind of like a general Unity tip or trick that you may or may not know. And it's something that you should uh, probably use in most of your projects. At least this one will be. And obviously I'll explain the situations when to use them in the upcoming ones, but it's more like a tips or tricks video, yeah. So I'll be mentioning some, something that if you're perhaps new to Unity or perhaps new to game development, it's something you might not have considered, but I'll explain why you should do it and what it is. So in this one we're going to be covering a preloaded scene, uh, and the purpose of it is so that um, when you load up your game, regardless of what your first scene is, whether it's a menu or straight into the game or whatever, this scene will always load first and it will then store all of your um, persistent script so maybe your like music manager game manager whatever manager for all your different stuff um you can put onto this object and it's just generally a tip or like a thing that you should do anyway um it's really good practice and it just means that you'd have to awkwardly make sure that you don't destroy certain things when you go between certain scenes now obviously a lot of you seeing this will probably already know this might already do it but i'm just going to cover it for everyone because it's meant to be a simple tips or tricks video so uh, I want to first of all thank my patrons, so thanks to Wesley, Fullborn, Paul Robinson, just thought I'd say it backwards because uh, why not. Uh, if anyone else wants to help support on Patreon, then the link is in the description below. Apart from that, let's get into it. So, quick video, we're uh, one minute in and this video should take no longer than five to ten minutes. So, basically, you got a scene, you got a new Unity project, you don't need anything particular for this, you can easily add it into your already existing Unity project. So, as you know, when you want to build your game, you'll go to File and Build and Run, maybe you just know the the uh, shortcut. I think the first time you press it though, regardless, it'll always bring you to this window. Now, I mean, presumably you're going to be making it for PC, Mac and Linux, but if you're not, it should be the same process. So, as you see, scenes here, sample scene, what, what we're currently in. When we press build and it builds the game, it's going to build this scene and it means that this is the only scene we can possibly even go to. It's the only scene that exists anyway. But like, if I added a new scene, so create a new scene. Um, am I blind? Have they moved it? There it is. I was looking right at it. So, like, if this was uh, scene two and this was scene one, uh, I don't know how we could uh, differ between these, but you get the point. Um, I could just put something else in the scene. The point is, we've got scene two and one. Um, now, if we go back to our build settings, you'll see scene one. So, if I built this game, and even if I had code in, like, a script to go to the other scene, it wouldn't work because it doesn't exist. We actually have to... Um, add it. Now one way is just to drag it in, simple. Um, now it has an order and in reality the order doesn't matter so long as the top one is the one you load first because regardless of what order it's in the top one will always be loaded first. So if I move that to the top and I built the game that scene would load first and then any code can go around. Now obviously you can go to scene by name or you can go by index or you can go like to next scene so if you did have it in order you could just say next scene. So that's index 0 and 1. Now the thing is you might have this scene be the main menu number two or you might have this scene be um, the actual game or level one or something it depends how you have your game but this scene one the first scene that's loaded so you could even call it like preloaded scene or something like it's the scene that loads before everything else so like um, like preload if we um, see this scene it gets loaded first now what we could have is if we go in this preload scene, we don't want a main camera, don't want a light, there's nothing in the scene. All we really want is an empty game object, so it's just a manager kind of thing, um, with a script on it. Now, um, this script is literally just only ever going to be used here, and it's simply going to be added and forgotten about. Now, it's literally just going to have uh, like one function, um, well, in the awake, and it's going to use a function called don't destroy on load that you might not know about or you might know about. So. Um, basically don't destroy and load what it is it's a function that l lets unity know that you want whatever this thing is attached to to not be destroyed when you go between scenes because by default when you go from scene one to two you will actually um lose whatever there is so like for example before we actually do the don't destroy and load we could just say on the start um let's go to the update let's zoom in so uh using Unity engine dot scene, whoops dot scene management. If we then said like um, we could say we want to go to scene, um, so sorry. Um, what we actually want to do this script is just going to be don't destroy and load. Now we're going to put it in the wake. 
um, awake gets called when start does at the start of the in the first frame like before everything else but awake gets called before start so they both get called in the same frame but the awake code will get ran before the um, other code now this don't destroy and load takes in what what not to destroy now usually you would just say this so basically this script whatever this is on now we're not going to put this on the don't destroy and load um, well no so we are but what I want to show for an example is if we do a uh, scene manager, whoops, scene manager dot load scene, um, and it can take in an index, I'm pretty sure is one of them, yeah. So we're, this is scene zero. If we put scene one there and we press play, let's call it, um, just call it manager. If we just have this script say, you know, go to that other scene and this script is, you know, on the object in the scene, if we press play, as soon as we load, we're actually in scene 02, as you can see up there. We're in scene 02, it's gone, right? It's gone. We've got a main camera and light from the other scene. But what if you want all the code on here, so like music manager and everything, you want it to go between scenes. You don't have to like have it in all your scenes. What you would do is you would actually have in here, we don't need scene management. Um, this script is simply just going to have in the awake method, we're just going to have, uh, so let's put it awake, put, um, private void awake, put it a capital A. All we want it to do is we want it to say, don't destroy and load this. You could also put a uh, game object, I think that works. I like, don't destroy this game object, but the script works. So if we had that, okay. And then let's say we also had another script on here uh, called scene loader. Um, and then the scene loader script did the thing that I was just on about with the, you know, going to the other scene. So we just tell it to uh, unity engine dot scene management scene management if we then said um, in the start method to um, load uh, so scene manager dot load scene if we then said to go to scene one so just like we had but we've got the don't destroy and load thing on it then we press play so see managers here now we're going to press play and what actually happens is as we go to the next scene we have a scene two, which is all the stuff in the scene. We also have a don't destroy and load category down here, which has our manager on with our scripts. So the don't destroy and load and the scene loader. So um, that's basically it, to be honest. As I said, these are meant to be short. The purpose in this is so that what you can do is if you had um, code to manage music, you don't want your music to cut off as you go between scenes. You might want it to fade or something. But the point is you want the uh, class handling all of the music to persist through the scenes. So all you do is you would add it to here, right? You've got music manager, you know, music manager, not spacer, manager. Um, and then do that code. And then if you had this music manager playing an audio clip, which I don't happen to have an audio clip, but you get the point. Um, yeah, like an audio source on here uh, doing something. Uh, didn't mean to click on that one. Then that would work, that would stay between the scenes. You know, we press play, pretend that's playing some music. We go to the next scene. We're still in the, when scene, don't, scene 02, but the music is still here if we were playing it. So obviously this is to be used uh, on your start scene and it just does the thing, adds all the code and then goes to wherever you want. So the point is, so long as you keep that scene as um, build index zero, you can have whatever scenes you want afterwards and all your stuff will be there. So let's say you were testing levels in your game, right? You could have level one and you could go from preload straight to level one. But let's say you wanted to test level five. You don't have to go through level one, two, three, five. You don't have to write something to skip to a certain level. You can just drag it up in the build thing and press play and it will go. Um, equally, it would save you the effort of having to like change your code. Say you actually load scene five. You could just, and then recompile your code. You could just simply drag that and press play. So I hope this helped. Uh, obviously, it's something you should include if you haven't already. Um, I hope this helped a few of you. Um, if any of you have ideas of kind of like uh, Unity tips and tricks that I should cover, preferably for beginners, but obviously, you know, I can do more advanced ones as well. Just feel free to leave those in the comments below. If you haven't already liked and subscribed, then that would mean a lot. But apart from that, thanks for watching and goodbye.